morning, Pioneer Nation. This is Megan Renahan with the Batesville School District. It is time for the Pioneer Update. The Pioneer Update is brought to you by Citizens Bank. They are people first, and that's fabulous because here at the Batesville School District, we are students first. This morning, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Ken James. Good morning. How are you today? Good morning. I'm good and well. Thanks. What, wonderful. So we just want to do some well wishes for Thanksgiving. We're very excited about our duration, our first quarter, our first 15 weeks, etc. We wish everybody a happy and safe Thanksgiving. We're so proud of our staff for their work, their dedication, their support as we've geared up to a new transitional leadership. We just appreciate everything that they've done and we wish them all a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Wonderful and equally I would like to say thank you for everything that you've done for us in the school district. We've really really appreciated all the hard work you've put into it. No easy task but I believe we've got the right man to help us get where we need to be for sure. Well, you're very welcome. We've got a lot of things before us. We've worked real hard. We've planned out some things that we need to tackle in the future to make sure we're really staying on target. And as we go down the path of searching for a new superintendent, that will take effect uh, hopefully in July of 2025. Then uh, those are things we have to make sure we have in place for that new person coming in. Absolutely. Now give us a little bit of an update on the construction site because y'all had the opportunity to tour it the other day. We did. We had a great opportunity where we took the choral staff, the band staff, the high school administration, and representative from the district office through that magnificent facility. And it is awe-inspiring. Once you get inside, it takes on a totally different meaning from what you see from the outside. It's going to be a definite showpiece for us. There is ample space throughout that facility because, in fact, we are doubling the space of the high school campus. Wow. We have several classrooms along with the band room, the choral room, practice rooms, percussion rooms, the cafeteria. Just uh, everybody was blown away. Mm -hmm. The teachers, you could just see the gleam in their eye. They're so excited to get in there. They are looking forward to many, many years of fabulous presentations for this community and it's going to be a showpiece for us we still have to work on some funding for that particular piece and we're working hard on that but it was a real good experience and i plan to do the same thing for board members and community members later throughout this coming year so that they can get a a, an idea of what this is going to look like because it's going to be a showpiece for us and we're very excited about it well pencil me in (laughs) I will, no doubt about it. I would love to see it. Well, and I'm just really excited because what a lot of people might not realize is we actually have more students that participate in fine arts from our junior high and high school perspective than what we do in our athletics. So We do. And they've gone without facilities for all these years. So this is so hopeful, and I know that the directors that are here have worked very, very hard to help Mm -hmm. give their input about what those facilities should look like to accommodate the space of what they should have as far as that square footage goes to accommodate those students and also room for growth yeah the gleam in their eyes yesterday was just uh, it was inspiring you could just see their excitement as they walked through that room and they thought about different things and what was Mm going to happen and they were talking about where they are now and where they're going to be and what the difference is going to be but the program has grown Uh, the junior high numbers are very high the high school numbers are high our elementary numbers are high of course Mm -hmm. we had a presentation from west elementary the other night at the board meeting they've got a total of about 40 kids in the choir at west elementary so this is an arena that's growing this will be a draw and a showpiece for students coming into our community Mm -hmm. and people want to be a part of this and hopefully that's going to be uh, one of the catalysts that can get more students into the district and really kind of showcase what we are about with respect to fine arts. Sure well and UACCB has been a wonderful partner for us for years but now we'll get to be independent and maybe even provide a service to the community that's given back to us so much and just thinking of it from the perspective of graduation absolutely you know or for the performances for our elementary campuses to have the appropriate space Mm -hmm. and theater i mean it's going to be wonderful for those programs it will be a great opportunity and it'll be an opportunity for us to showcase spaceful Mm -hmm. Along with, like you say, the UACCB facility that we've been blessed with being able to 
uh, borrow and utilize because we had no other space to do that. But this is going to give us that opportunity to really showcase that high school campus and what the high school can become. And it'll allow us to stage a variety of different types of productions because that stage it will be the first time that not only the band and the choral and all the theater, they can put everybody on that stage at once in terms of sharing that space before they've not been able to do that. So like a full orchestra performance. Absolutely. Then. And we wow. have an orchestra pit yeah. down below the stage. And uh, it, it's a class uh, facility. There's no doubt about it. And we walked all the way up to the balcony and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. it, it's astonishing as to how high you are when you get up there. Right. And it's a... Uh, it's one of those things, I mean, we commented that, you know, you could sit up there and uh, talk about the nosebleed section. It's high. It's that high. <laughs> I mean, it's a big time theater. There's yeah. no doubt about it. And it'll be something that this community celebrates and enjoys for years to come. You bet. Well, and then even thinking about just from the daily perspective, lunch. Lunch has been yeah. such a you know, a challenge for us with junior high and high school utilizing that same space on a daily basis. Lunch for our junior high students starts at 1015. Um, I challenge you to mm -hmm. eat lunch at 1015 and tell me when your belly starts growling right. at the end of the day and ask me if you need to check your attitude. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so. this is going to alleviate all those kind of situations. And again, just to be a the cafeteria is also going to be a, just a beautiful Absolutely. showpiece for us. No doubt about it. So, Dr. James, we're looking ahead to some opportunities for naming as far as the seating area goes. So what is that going to look like? I know you said we have around 542 seats. 32. 32. Yeah, okay. That's okay. Yeah. 532 on theater seats on the bottom floor. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be selling nameplates. And uh, we're getting prices right now for what those are going to cost, and then we'll establish a price for those. And then place a patron's name or somebody that they want to place a name there, somebody they want to honor. And that'll be a showpiece for them as well when mm -hmm. they go into that theater environment. So that'll be another fundraising opportunity for us because this facility is costing $47 million. Mm -hmm. We are still short on being able to pay for that. We're working very diligently on getting the resources because we have to pay that final bill come next fall, whatever that we turn that facility over. So that's something we're working very hard on. We're working with patrons. Uh, we're also looking at if there's companies out there or organizations that are big enough locally that want to have naming right opportunities, we're engaging in those kind of conversations because that's something we're going to have to continue to, like I say, look at how we can finance this whole operation because not only do we have to pay for it, we have to sustain the operation throughout the course of the year without any new money. Right. And you're doubling space. We're going to have to add staff. We're going to have to add somebody to manage that facility because you don't have a $47 million facility and just not have somebody that manages that full time right? because you have to take care of it. You can't turn that facility over or rent it out without somebody monitoring that mm -hmm. process. If you do, then you're just setting yourself up for further failure. We're not going to do that. But again, with that, we have no new money to do any of that. So that's a real significant opportunity for us yeah. as we move forward and we actually have a um a process if someone wanted to contribute that they can give us some funds you know and and assist us with completing this project and we hope that uh we have quite a few people come forward and and want to assist with that because that's what it's going to take it's going to take it really is a, a village literally to complete this project there's no doubt about it and they do have that opportunity through our foundation and they can go to uh, our website and find out that information and then make a donation uh, over one year, up to 10 years, or whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. We're open to pledges. We're open to anything and everything that people want to do to help us. Um, I understand completely. People pay property tax, and that supports the schools, and they say, well, why do you need more money? Well, we've just got ourselves in a situation to where we've got to pay some significant bills without additional resources to do it. Mm -hmm. That's one that's always difficult to navigate. Uh, it's something we've been working on since I've been here to make a plan of action. But it also takes some other uh, really tough decisions that have to be made in terms of how we're going to prioritize our resources. Mm -hmm. Because there's not any new money coming down the pipe. Right. We've got to stop the loss of students. 
that's an obstacle not only for us, but every school district in the state of Arkansas. Because mm-hmm. when you lose students, you lose revenue. So if we continue to go down that path in this county, which this county has had a record of doing that for the last couple of years, uh, that's going to be problematic. Because if we have less money, we have less mo- less students, we have less money to operate on. So those are always things we've got to keep our eye on. The people have to understand that, that we've got to make all this work. We've got to have the resources to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I believe we're doing everything in our power to make what we have work to the best of our ability. Uh, yep. But right now it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. And We've when made sa- all the lemonade we can make. <laughs> yeah, we, we really have. And when people look at what we've done this year with respect to budget, we cut 37 positions out of the budget this year. Right. That's a combination of certified and classified staff. But on top of that, if you look at what our operational budget was last year and what it is this year, we're $4.9 million dollars less than what we were operating on. That's how much more we have cut out of the budget. So when you look at what Batesville has done this year, uh, it's it's really quite uh, an example of what can be done and what needs to be done Mm -hmm. when times get tough. But it doesn't lead us to the next point of what's going to happen after that. Right. And those are decisions we'll have to continue to look at and make. And you've had those conversations with our entire district about the sacrifices that are going to have yep. to be made. And I feel like everyone believes in this district enough to do the work that needs yep. to be done. I so. agree. Batesville has always been a community that has supported very strongly education, been very proud of education over the years. Mm-hmm. We have to get some of that zeal and, and excitement back in that we may have lost for a while. But that's what it's going to take for this district to be able to fully rebound and get back to what we used to be. And we have that capability. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. And people are working very hard. Our administrators, our teachers, our classified staff, they're doing everything they can to facilitate all of this that we've talked about and make it work. Absolutely. And that's what it takes. It sure does. Well, Dr. James, let's have a wonderful Thanksgiving break. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your gratitude and giving us an update of not only where we're at with the district, but where we need to be. And I appreciate your time. You're very welcome and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We appreciate everyone's support and everything that you do on behalf of this Batesville School District. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And as we always like to say, it's a great day to be a pioneer. Absolutely.